Let's graph this equation y equals 2x minus 1 using the slope intercept form. Well, I always like to write that form underneath it, y equals mx plus b, because right away I know what my slope m is and what my y-intercept b is. Now to graph it, we always graph the y-intercept first. In this case, the y-intercept is negative 1. So I go over here to my y-axis, and I put a dot at negative 1. My next step is the slope. And I know the slope is 2, because I get it from right here. Well, remember, the slope is rise over run. So I need to write this as a fraction. Anytime we have a whole number, we simply put a 1 underneath it, 2 over 1. So what I do is I start from my y-intercept, I start from negative 1, and I rise 2, so I go up 2, and then I run 1, and I put another dot. Let's do that again. I go up 2, 1, 2, and run 1. And I can keep doing that, up 2 over 1, forever and ever. And then you draw, oh, kind of draw the line. Hopefully you do a little better than I did. And you always want to label it y equals 2x minus 1, just so that your instructor knows that's what this graph is supposed to be. And that's all there is to graphing using the y-intercept formula. Let's graph this equation y equals 2 thirds x plus 2 using the slope-intercept form. Well, I always like to write that form underneath my equation. And the reason is that I can see exactly what m is, my slope, and exactly what my y-intercept b is right away. So my y-intercept b equals 2. And that's actually what I'm going to graph first. So I go over here to my y-axis. Remember, the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. And I put a really good dot there. Then I look at my slope m equals 2 thirds. And I also remember that slope is rise over run. So in this case, I'm going to go up 2, and I'm going to run 3, 2 over 3. So let's do that. I'm going to go up 2, 1, 2, and then run 3, 1, 2, 3. And I can do that again, up 2, 1, 2, and run 3, 1, 2, 3. And I can keep doing that forever and ever. Now, an interesting thing about this is 2 thirds is a positive fraction. Well, I could also say that's negative 2 over negative 3. They're the same. Because remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So in this case, if I start from my y-intercept 2, I would go down 2 and then negative 3. So I'm going to go down 2, 1, 2, and then negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Do you see that this is going to end up on the same line? Let's do it again. Down 2 and over 3. 1, 2, 3. Now I'm going to try to graph this one the best I can. And you should use a ruler when you're doing this. And then I'm going to label it y equals 2 thirds x plus 2 plus and that's all there is to that. Let's graph the equation y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 using the slope intercept form. To do that, I always like to write that form y equals m x plus b right underneath the equation that I'm going to graph because then I don't have to guess what my m is, and m is my slope, or what my b is, and b is my y intercept. So what we have to do first is graph the y-intercept, and in this case it's 3. Now, the y-intercept means where it crosses the y-axis, so I'm going to put a really good dot here at 3. Now I'm going to look at my slope. m equals negative 1 half. Now that means rise over run. To do that, instead of going up like I'm used to doing, I'm actually going to go down in the negative direction because it's a negative 1. My run is still positive, so I'm going to go in the positive direction. So let's do that. We're going to start here at my y-intercept of 3. I'm going to go down 1 and positive 2. Down 1, positive 2. 
and I can keep doing that till infinity. Now, one interesting thing is negative 1 over 2 is the same thing as 1 over negative 2. Those are both negative 1 half. I can also graph this one using rise over run. But in this case, my rise will be in the positive direction, but my run will be in the negative direction. So let's start at the y-intercept of 3 again. This time, I'm going to go up 1 and run 2. Now you see I did that in the negative direction. Up 1 in the positive and 2 in the negative. Do you see that these all line up? So I'm going to try to graph that as best I can. You should be using a ruler so yours will look even better than mine. And what's helpful for instructors is if you actually label it. And that's all there is to graphing using the y-intercept form.